How can you use the Jehovah Witness Bible to prove per their method of butchering scriptures to blaspheme the true Jesus and rob him of his glory? If you use that same method of exegesis, you'll end up proving that the Father is not the omniscient Lord. Are you ready? They'll often quote John 17, 3, where it says, this is eternal life, taking in knowledge of you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So their reasoning goes like this. If the Father is the only true God, then Jesus can't be God. And if the Father is the one God, then Jesus can't be God. So they interpret statements where, let's say, the Father is said to be the only true God or the one God, the Father. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, to exclude the Lord Jesus Christ instead of including the Lord Jesus Christ in the union of the Father's deity. Meaning, instead of taking these statements in the totality of Scripture, what the Bible teaches as a whole, that the Father is the only true God, the one God in union with his eternal son and eternal spirit, not to the exclusion of the son and the spirit, because these statements are meant to exclude all other so-called gods that are wrongly worshipped as gods, not meant to exclude Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Are you guys with me there? The statements that the father is the only true God or the one God, when you read them in the context of the very chapter, where these statements are made, or in the context of the book, or in the context of the writings of that author, or in the overall context of the Bible, do not intend to exclude or deny that Jesus and the Spirit are one with the Father in his divine essence, and therefore are also truly God. You with me there? You understand my point? So if you can understand my point, I'm now going to turn it against them. I'm going to show how if they're consistent and they believe their own Bible, if they believe in their own Bible, then they're going to have to admit the Father is not omniscient and he is not the one true Lord and that Jesus knows more than the Father. You with me there? I'm going to now use their Bible to prove it. I'm going to apply their method of interpreting these passages where the Father is said to be the one God or the only true God, against them to show that if they're consistent, you end up with the Father not being omniscient and not being the one true Lord and Jesus knowing more than the Father. Okay, Jehovah Witness Bible. Let's go to Jude chapter 1, verse 4. My reason is that certain men have slipped in among you who are long ago appointed to this judgment, by the scriptures, they are ungodly men who turn the undeserved kindness of our God into an excuse for brazen conduct and who prove false to our only, to our only owner and Lord Jesus Christ. Only owner and Lord. You have only one owner, despot, and Lord, Kyrios, Kurios, Jesus Christ. Right? And the word there, if you look at it in the Greek, it's ton. Monon despotain ton monon despotain ke kiriun yesun christun ton monon monas one and only despotain despot ke kiriun and lord the only lord the only sovereign master the sovereign master and lord you have that's in heaven is jesus christ therefore if jesus christ is the only sovereign and Lord, reigning in heaven, that believers have, that means the Father is not your sovereign, he's not your owner, and he's not your Lord, and he's subject to Christ. You caught it? Now, Revelation 19, 12, and I'm going to read 13 so you know who it's talking about. His eyes are a fiery flame, and on his head are many diadems. He has a name written that no one knows but he himself. He has a name written that no one knows but he himself. I'm going to read three times because we're Trinitarians. He has a name written that no one knows but he himself. And who is he? And he is clothed with an outer garment, stained with blood, and he is called by the name the Word of God. The Word of God is not the Father. 
It's Jesus Christ. Jesus has a name that no one knows except himself. He alone knows his name. Since Jesus is not the Father, he's not the Holy Spirit, that means the Father doesn't know as much as Jesus does. The Holy Spirit doesn't know as much as Jesus does. Jesus knows something that neither the Father nor the Spirit know. You caught it? See what you just did with the way they butcher scripture? Oh, but it's going to get even better. Are you aware that the Father is not immortal by nature? And the Father is not our sovereign ruler? Only Jesus is, according to the Joe Witness Bible? Here, 1 Timothy 6, 14 to 16, and I'm going to quote what they say about this passage. The Joe's Witnesses and their writings admit this passage is about Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 6, 14 and 16. To observe the commandment in a spotless and irre irreprehensible, in a spotless and irreprehensible way until the manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to read their own published writings where they admit what I'm about to read is Jesus, which to happen only potentate. Who's the only ruler, emperor, potentate in heaven? Jesus Christ. The only potentate will show in its own appointed times, he is the king of those who rule as kings, and Lord of those who rule as lords, the one alone having immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, his light cannot be seen or blind you like it blinded Paul when Jesus appeared in his glorious light. To him be honor and eternal might. Amen. Now notice what it says. Jesus Christ is the only potentate Sovereign ruler, our only master, despot, and Lord in heaven. And he alone, he alone has immortality. And he alone dwells in an approachable light. Now, let me show you how the Joe's Witnesses interpret this, okay? All right, let me read what it says. Who is this about? Okay, Jehovah and Jesus Christ. Jehovah is the happy God, and his son, Jesus Christ, his son, Jesus Christ, is called, quote, the happy and only potentate. Happy and only potentate. 1 Timothy 6.15. So they just admit to you that 1 Timothy 6.15 is calling Jesus, Jehovah's son, the happy and only potentate. Who? Jesus. A to Bible understanding, page 711. Let me find. Here it is, this one. This is another of their publication online. Who is being referred to as the happy and only potentate in 1 Timothy 6? The first one described in the Bible as rewarded with the gift of immortality is Jesus Christ. So he's the first one raised immortal as a man. That he did not possess immortality before his resurrection by God is seen from the inspired apostles words at Romans 6, 9. Christ, now that he has been raised up from the dead, dies no more. Death is master over him no more. Compare Revelation 1, 17, 18. Now watch. The Jehovah's Witnesses admit, guys, this is gold. Learn these citations. Use them. They're telling you. 1 Timothy 6, 14, 16. That's Jesus. Look what they say. For this reason, when describing him as, quote, the king of those who rule as kings and lord of those who rule as lords, end quote, 1 Timothy 6, 15 to 16, shows that Jesus is distinct from all such other kings and lords in that he is, quote, the one alone having immortality, end quote. The other kings and lords, because of being mortal, die, even as, as did also the high priest of Israel. The glorified Jesus, God's appointed high priest, after the order of Melchizedek, however, has an indestructible life. Hebrews 7, 15, 17, 23 to 25. Did you see what they just admit? They just admit to you, Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, called Jesus, in 1 Timothy 6, 15 to 16, the happy and only potentate, ruler, emperor. He's the only emperor in heaven. And he alone has immortality. No one but him is immortal by nature, dwelling in unapproachable light. So now, let's use the Joe Witness reasoning against them, folks. Jesus is the only potentate, emperor, the only sovereign master, owner, despotes is the Greek word, 
the only Lord, Kyrios, reigning in heaven, and he alone is immortal by nature, and he has a name that he alone knows. So if he is the only one who is the Lord, the only one who's the potentate, emperor, the only one who's the sovereign owner and master, and the only one who's immortal by nature, and the only one who knows his name, that means the father is not master, owner, potentate, Lord, and the father is not immortal by nature, and the father doesn't know everything the son knows because the son knows something the father doesn't know. So the father is subject to the son according to the Jehovah Witness way of interpreting the Bible. You caught it? Now, as a Trinitarian, we can explain this very easily. How do we explain this as a Trinitarian? Whatever is true in regards to any person of the Godhead in relation to their deity, when a Bible writer, writer says something in respect to the Father or the Son or the Spirit in regards to their divine nature. In other words, if the Father said to the only true God, that statement would also be true for the Son and the Spirit. Why? Because the Father, Son, and Spirit are depicted, depicted as being truly God, fully God, co-equal in essence. Therefore, any statement made about any person of the Godhead, like Jesus is the only Lord, ruler, potentate, would equally apply to the Father because Jesus' sovereignty, his rulership, is something he possesses in union with the Father and the Spirit, not in isolation from the Father. And if Jesus is said to be immortal by nature, that is a divine quality and attribute that he possesses in union with the Father and the Spirit, not in isolation from them. So whatever is said about the Father in respect to deity would equally apply to the Son and the Spirit because the Bible as a whole teaches that the Son and the Spirit are just as much God as the Father is. So when it says the Son alone knows his name, that's to the exclusion of all creatures, not to the exclusion of the Father and the Spirit, because the Father and the Spirit are not creatures, but one with Christ and possess an omniscient mind. See, as a Trinitarian, we can account for all these passages. But a Jehovah's Witness, if he's consistent, he's not going to argue the Father is less than the Son. He doesn't know as much as the Son is. The Father isn't immortal by nature. He isn't our only Lord, potentate, and owner. The Son is, not the Father. You just buried the Jehovah's Witnesses from their Bible.